Hello, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to go on with open seams and closed seams. Now an open seam is your basic plain all-purpose seam. It's just putting two pieces of fabric together and sewing a straight line. So this is what you use for everything depending on your work but it's your basic seam. Once you know this you can sew. Now if you see here I used a straight stitch because this is a woven fabric. If you're sewing a knit fabric, you might you use a uh, zigzag stitch because that will allow the stitches to stretch with the fabric. But it's the same thing, it's still an open seam. It's just that instead of using a straight stitch, you use a zigzag stitch. Then, here we have a French seam. Now, a French seam is an example of a closed seam. There are many let me not say many, but there are different types of closed seams. So this is the most basic one, the French seam. You also have the full French seam. You also have flat fill seams. You have the full flat fill seams. You have the enclosed, self-enclosing seam and all that. So this is your basic French seam. Why it's called a closed seam is that the seam allowance is protected and it's hidden by the time you sew it up. You can see there's, there's no seam allowance, no sorry, there's no raw edge actually showing. Like here on an open seam you still have a raw edge that is visible and it can fray. So this you're going to have to do some type of seam finishing to it which we'll do at the end of the video. And this once you've done your French seam you don't have to finish anything it's just ready for use like that. So let's get into the video and start sewing. First, we're going to start with the open seam. What you want to do is take your fabric. I have two layers of fabric here and you're going to have them facing, right sides facing. So the right side should be on the inside and the wrong sides will be on the outside like this. Then I'm going to secure it with some pins. You want to put your pins in horizontally so they are easy to pull out while you're sewing. So I'm going to secure it with like two or three pins. Make sure they're aligned. Here. Here. So I have my pins. By now you should have your machine threaded. Your thread should be at the back. Set your stitch length to the default 2.5 mil or 10 stitches per inch. And in some machines, you might have to set your zigzag stitch to zero if that is not already done automatically. And we're ready. First of all, I'm going to just align my fabric to my seam allowance. My seam guidelines here, as we discussed in the last video, I'm sewing at, mm, let's stick to half an inch. I have my fabric lined up, put my presser foot down, put my needle down. I'm going to take out the first pin. You don't want to sew over your pins. And now we're just going to sew. I'll sew one or two steps, back stitch, and continue sewing. Get to the end, back stitch, finish sewing. Okay, have my seam. Now, what we're going to do is press this open. Now we're going to press. What you want to do is open up your fabric, open up your seam allowance. You see a seam allowance, you open it up, press it down with your fingers, then 
I'm going to use the iron to give it a good press. And you turn it to the other side. I'm going to press that. So what you now have is your seam is open, it's flat, and that's what gives it that smooth, clean, tailored look. And by ironing it, we've melded the stitches into the fabric. And this makes your seams last longer too. Next seam we're going to tackle is the French seam. The French seam is a type of clothes seam. As I explained earlier, there are many types of clothes seams, but this is the easiest and most common one. Now, once again, I have my fabric. Now, a French seam is done in two parts. The first part, we're going to sew with the fabric wrong sides together, which is different from the other one, which was right sides together. So we're going to start with wrong sides together because a French seam is done in two layers. We're going to sew this layer like this. We're going to flip it and sew it again. And that's how the seam comes closed. Also, you have to divide your seam allowance into two parts. It depends on the type of seam allowance you're using. For instance, I'm sewing at half an inch seam allowance. So I'll divide it into two equal parts, which is quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch. So my first seam that I'm going to sew will be at a quarter of an inch. And when I flip it over, the second seam will also be at a quarter of an inch so that I have a total of half an inch. So that's how you calculate the seam allowance you use when sewing a French seam. Once again, I have my fabric wrong sides together. I'm going to pin to secure my layers. I'll put one at the beginning. I'll put one at the end. And I'll put one in the middle. So I'm secured. As I said, I'm going to line this up at a quarter of an inch. If you have this type of presser foot, this snap on presser feet, the a quarter of an inch is the edge of your presser foot. So I have this lined up. Put my presser foot down. Here we go. Put my needle down. And now I'm going to sew. We start moving. Remember to backstitch. I'll take this pin out. And now we'll just sew. Remember when sewing, keep your eye on the edge of the fabric and not on the needle. I'm watching the edge of my presser foot. I'm watching the edge of my fabric. We're getting to the end. I'm going to backstitch and finish off. So that's my first seam. Now we're going to give this a press. First, we're just going to press it down. Set in the seams. Like that. And I'll flip it to the other side. Now you see, I'm not actually pressing the seam open on the other side. I left it closed. What I want to do is create a crisp edge. I'm making sure that this is properly opened. This is quite open, it should be flat. Now what you want to do is fold this over. Make sure your seam is straight here. I'm going to press it one more time too. 
hold it in place. I'm making sure my seam is right at the center. Like that. So I have that seam right at the center. Now that I have everything pressed, before we sew the next seam, we're just going to trim down, I'm going to open it, trim down the seam allowance a little so that it's not too bulky and it's easier to sew. So what I mean by trim down, I'm just going to, it's, this is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to trim it down to about half, which is about an eighth of an inch, like so. Just about halfway through. So, have my seam trimmed down. We've already pressed. So, it is ready for sewing. I think this will be a good time to pin it down. I like to pin it down, make sure nothing moves around while I'm sewing my second layer. So one pin at the beginning. I'm going to put another pin at the end. And I'll put one more pin right in the middle. And now we're ready to sew. You can see this is the original seam that I folded on. It's right at the middle. Now we're finally back to right sides together. Let's get back to the machine. Now, as I said earlier, we already sewed at um, a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to do the second half, which is another quarter of an inch. So once again, I will line this up with the edge of my presser foot. There, put my needle down, take out the first pin, and now we'll just sew. Do a couple of stitches, back stitch, and then continue sewing. get to the end, back stitch a little, and cut your threads, and that is our second seam. And then we'll press this down too. Now we're just going to line this up, and press it so that it's smooth. You can see right now it's all bumpy. It's going to give it a press. You can see I'm actually pressing, I'm not ironing. Just sealing that seam down on those stitches. You can turn it over to the other side. So the seam is set, it's flat. You can go ahead and open it. What I like to do, you can just press it to one side like that and turn it. So I have my seam on one side. I just like to open this up quite nicely like that. And the corner, yes. So I have my seam pressed on the side. I have the bulk of the seam on one side just to keep it flat. I didn't leave it hanging in the middle, so I pressed it down to one side. So that is your French seam. Let's compare the two, shall we? So here we have our two seams side by side. You can see on the right side, they're the same. You just have 
a basic claim same like that and if we turn it over on the wrong side you can see your open seam the seams are open and you have your French seam which has an enclosed seam so that's the difference you can see the stitches are enclosed apart from the last one you did but the idea is that your seam allowance is closed up that's why it's called a closed seam so something like this you're done once you're done sewing you don't have to do anything else to tidy up your seams now and what this means is that your seam allowance is protected because now this fabric is not going to fray when you wash it and you use it because we've protected the ends but with the open seam i still have raw edges on my seam allowance and this has to be finished so we're going to talk about seam finishes in a minute another thing i want you to note is that this is your all-purpose everyday seam you use it for everything and it's also flat it's a much flatter seam this seam leaves a little bulk you can actually feel it and you can see it but they have their uses as I said, this is all purpose. You use it for everything you sew, basically. And it's really your choice how you end it. And this, you can use this to sew most things, but usually not very thick fabric. It's very good for sheer fabric. It's very good for children's clothes because it's a very durable seam. So over time, when you sew things, you'll really be able to decide what you want to use a French seam for and what you want to use your open seam for. But for everything else, really, it's just the open seam. You only have to worry about how you're going to tidy up your edges so that the fabric doesn't fray unless you're sewing with knitted fabric and it doesn't fray and then you don't have to do anything you can just sew it and leave it so let's get to seam finishes i'll tell you a few basic ways to tidy up your seams now let's talk about seam finishes so this is our open seam and let me fold this and that was the seam allowance. As I said, this seam allowance is raw. We have to do something to it to protect it so that your garment lasts longer. So here I have a couple of examples. There are many ways to finish your seams, but these are the most straightforward ones, the basic ones that you do most often. First, you can use pinking shears to cut your seam allowance. So this seam allowance, what you do you take pink and shares like this they are zigzag scissors and you actually cut the same allowance or you can put both of them together like this you can put them together like this and cut so you just turn it to the side and trim it down so that will give you this effect because pinking shears make little zigzag cuts which are all on the bias it won't fray it might pull over time but really it won't fray and mostly your seams will be protected and that's a very straightforward and easy way to do so you can see i have my stitching line here and i just trimmed the edges off with the pinking shears so that's the first way you can use the next method will be to actually use a zigzag stitch. If you have a zigzag stitch on your machine, all you have to do is, on your seam allowance, I just went in a bit about halfway, I did a zigzag stitch. And after doing the zigzag stitch, I took my scissors and trimmed just at the edge of that zigzag stitch, just to trim the allowance down. You don't have to, you can actually just zigzag it and forget about it. I always, sometimes I just want to make it a little tidier, trimmed close to the edge of the zigzag stitch. Where you put your zigzag stitch is up to you. You can go a little more in near the stitching line. You can go a little more out towards the edge of your seam allowance. It depends on your choice and preference. So that's a good way you can just zigzag and then trim down a little so that you get a tidy finish and that should protect your seam and keep it from unraveling. And the final method, this is a more specialized method because it requires an overlocking machine or a serger, whichever you have. 
We'll go into that in another video. I did not introduce surgeries when I talked about sewing machines because I feel it isn't something a beginner needs. But if you just happen to have one for some reason, this is one way you can do it. So you simply use the serger or the overlocker and it makes these nice stitches. Also, another reason I brought this up, even if you don't have a serger, you might have a computerized sewing machine that has an overlock stitch. So you can also use that. So as you can see, it does this stitch that wraps around the edge of the seam allowance and that just tidies everything up and protects your seam. So thank you for watching. That brings us to the end of the video. We've done our open seam, our closed seam. We've looked at a few seam finishes and these are what you need to get started. The more we sew, the more things you will learn. But it's good to just digest this first. Next video, we're going to tackle basic hand sewing stitches. And that will be the end of our foundation lessons. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for watching. See you next week. And goodbye.